Hey everybody, this is Rhett. Welcome to Statistics. In this video, we'll be learning about measures of spread. Why do we need a measure of spread? Take a look at the three data sets on your screen. Each has a different mean, median, and mode. Using the measures of center alone, we can tell that the data sets are not identical. You might start to think that if the measures of center were equal across the board, that the data sets must be the same. Here are three new data sets. Look at data set A. What's the mean of data set A? Well, it's easy to see that the mean for data set A is 25. What's the median for data set A? That's 25 as well. And the mode, of course, is also 25. Take a look at data sets B and C. It might take you a minute, but I'm sure you could figure out that the mean, median, and mode for all three data sets is 25. But clearly, data sets A, B, and C are distinct. In data set A, we see one value repeated seven times. In data set B, we see a little more variety. And in data set 3, we see the most variety. To quantify this variety, we need a measure of spread, which is also called variability or dispersion. One measure of spread is the range. The range of a data set is the difference between the largest value and the smallest value in the data set. In Excel, we can use the max and min function and then take the difference. In data set A, the range is 0. In data set B, the range is 2. 26 minus 24 is 2. In data set C, the range is 50. The range allows us to distinguish between the three data sets. As you go from left to right, the range increases. There's more variety in data set C than there is in data set A or B. Let's pause for a minute to discuss deviations. A deviation for a given value of x is the difference between the data value and the mean of the data set. For a sample, a deviation equals x minus x bar. For a population, a deviation equals x minus mu. A deviation can roughly be thought of as the distance between a data value and the mean, except that a deviation can be negative, while distance is always positive. Let's calculate the deviations for data set B. Recall that a deviation is the difference between a data value and the mean. Take the value 24. The mean for data set B is 25. The difference between 24 and 25 is negative 1. The next data value is 24.3. The difference between 24.3 and the mean 25 is negative 0 0.7 and so forth. You might start to think that as a measure of spread we could take the mean of the deviations. Look at the total of the deviations column. You see that in this case it's 0. As it turns out the total of the deviations column will always equal 0 and so any time you try to take the mean of the deviations, you'll just get zero. The solution is to square the deviations. I've added a column to the table. In the last column, I'm just squaring the result of the previous column. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 0 0.7 squared is 0 0.49. Negative 0 0.2 squared is 0 0.04 and so forth. 
When I total the column of the squared deviations, I get 3.34. If I divide this by my population size, in this case 7, I'll get 0 0.4771. This is the mean of the squared deviations. The population variance, sigma squared, is the mean of the squared deviations in the population and is given by the formula sigma squared equals the sum of the squared deviations divided by the population size. In Excel, you can use the function var dot p. So how do we go from a mean of the square deviations to a mean of the deviations? Well, we start out with the sum of our square deviations and divide that by the population size to get variance. Then we take the square root of the variance and that gives us a standard deviation. Basically, we're undoing the squaring that we did in the last column. The population standard deviation, sigma, is the primary or positive square root of the population variance. The formula for population standard deviation is sigma equals the square root of the sum of the square deviations divided by population size. In Excel, you can use the function stdev.p. Recall that we distinguish between a statistic and a parameter. A parameter is a numerical summary of a population. Population variance and population standard deviation are examples of parameters. The counterpart to the population variance is the statistic sample variance and is called S squared. The counterpart to population standard deviation is the sample standard deviation and is called S. The sample variance is called S squared and the formula for sample variance is S squared equals the sum of the squared sample deviations divided by n minus 1. The sample standard deviation is called S and has the formula S equals the square root of the sample variance. In Excel, you can use the functions var.s and stdev.s. Notice that in both formulas the denominator is n minus 1. This distinguishes the sample formulas from the population formulas. Recall that in the population cal calculations we divide by n. In the video measures of center we discovered that the mean is not resistant to extreme values. It turns out that range, variance, and standard deviation are also not resistant to extreme values. Let's take another look at the CEO data that was introduced in the video on measures of center. Forbes magazine published data on the best small firms in 1993. The data extracted are the age and annual salary of the chief executive officer for the first 60 ranked firms. Here are the salaries for the 60 CEOs. The range among the salaries is $1,082,000. To interpret the range, you might say the difference between the largest and smallest salaries is more than a million dollars. The variance among the salaries is almost $48 million. And the standard deviation is $219,000. To interpret the standard deviation, you might say that the typical difference between a CEO's salary and the mean CEO salary is about $220,000. Standard deviation is a common measure of spread. Among the CEO ages, the standard deviation is 8.85 years. Does that indicate that there's a lot of variety among the CEOs? 
it's all relative. Keep in mind that the range of ages is 42 years. The range, together with the standard deviation, seem to indicate that there's a good bit of variety among the CEOs according to age. The standard deviation among the salaries, in other words, the typical difference between a CEO's salary and the mean CEO salary, is about $220,000. Does this indicate a lot of variety? Well, when you keep in mind that the range of salaries is over a million dollars, the two together seem to indicate that there is a lot of variety among the salaries. The dispersion is great. In this video, we discuss measures of spread, including range, variance, and standard deviation. The formulas for population variance and population standard deviation differ from the formulas for sample variance and sample standard deviation. Remember that in the versions for the sample, the denominator is n minus 1. We also discuss the symbols sigma squared, sigma, s squared, and s. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Until next time, stay real and be rational.